Well, so what we're talking about is controlling MRSA, which is methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. And it's one of, or better known as, the superbugs that we hear about in the media. A large percent of the population carries Staphylococcus aureus on their skin. It's one of the major pathogens of humans. It causes skin infections and things like that, and, or even more, more serious infections in some people. Um, MRSA is a drug-resistant form of that. We know that there are some main routes for transmission, and MRSA, as I mentioned, is contact. So that's contact either indirect with an object um, or contact, as I mentioned, from healthcare workers' hands uh, that haven't been cleaned. And the thing about MRSA is roughly one in four, one in five people that get colonized with it in hospitals will develop invasive infections with it. Those might be as simple as a bad skin infection or as serious as actually an infection of the heart valves, meningitis, pneumonia, bloodstream infections. There's a real mortality rate associated with MRSA. So the key idea of trying to control it is to stop spreading it around our hospitals. The five steps of the intervention begin with uh, cleaning your hands, so an aggressive hand hygiene program within your healthcare facility. Um, we're looking at uh, disinfecting or cleaning the, of the environment, so things that are used between clients or residents or patients are cleaned when they're used from one patient to the next. Essentially you want to identify who has it. You want to make sure that once you've identified who has it that they are put in isolation such that it's less likely it will spread to other people focus on surveillance, so making sure that when people come in they're identified as whether it be high risk for MRSA infection, so have they been in a hospital or a healthcare facility in the previous six months to a year, um, have they been in a nursing home, that sort of thing. So those are the risk factors that we focus on. In addition to that we're looking at uh, as well reporting of the data, so the data we get from MRSA infections in healthcare facilities. We want to make sure that it's reported to the senior leaders in the facility as well as the healthcare workers because again everyone has a vested interest in this and we're trying to prevent uh, infections for patients. So in, in, in terms of our hospital here we're using exactly the same techniques that Safer Healthcare Now is talking about in terms of screening people, hand hygiene, isolating patients appropriately. Um, our rates of MRSA that we've spread in the hospital have actually dropped this year. They've actually dropped by about 15 to 20 percent. That's despite the fact that we're admitting more patients than ever with MRSA. So although we're bringing more people into the hospital, we're spreading it to fewer patients. We have a long way to go. We're nowhere near where I'd like us to be, but we're definitely heading in the right direction. And I think that sends a strong message to people that you can actually do something about this. Just to focus on the fact that we are hearing from many reports and it is in the literature that the usual compliance with hand hygiene is about 40% and again we cannot blame the healthcare workers for that. We have to look at what the, the root cause of that is. Do they have the gel in the right places? Is it working um, in the location where they, they frequent? Is it close to the patient's bedside and that sort of thing? The difference with this intervention, with Safer Healthcare Now, the leadership are going to be involved. The leadership have to be involved in this intervention for the tools to get to the bedside for the staff to be able to access sinks and soap and water easily. And um, that's probably the most important thing, is to have the buy-in from the senior leadership and for them to, to hopefully support this initiative. We're fortunate here that we've had very strong senior admin buy-in on our, on our program. I'm sure a lot of places won't have that, so your biggest challenge by far is going to be getting the senior administrators to buy in. Simple issues such as what kind of gel are you going to use, where are you going to install it, how are you going to install it. Issues such as when staff start washing their hands, they may start getting dry hands, which they'll then may tell other colleagues, don't wash your hands because my hands are drying out. There's a lot of things like that. You'll have some managers that are going to buy into this right away and others that are going to push back and say my staff are too busy for this, they don't have time for education sessions, bother me about something else. So it's really about getting people's minds engaged and realizing that this is important and then being able to roll it out in a very systematic fashion. I think our, the reason why these interventions have failed in the past, and they have failed in many places, is because it's obvious we should do it, we should just tell everybody to do it and we walk away. I feel it's our duty as healthcare professionals because we do know now that we can decrease infections. It truly breaks my heart to think that we've got patients coming in the hospital for whatever reason, be it surgery, be it you know whatever, 
and then something is happening to them in our hospital that we could have prevented, which is harming them. That's really what is motivating me here. I mean, I don't, I, I, I cannot stand the fact that I think that we are infecting patients in our hospitals and we could be preventing it.